Coming up with a name for a car is not as easy as you think. Mitsubishi Pajero sounds fine until you learn that in Spanish, Pajero means jerk off. Naming a car after yourself is also a bad idea if you're called Gumpert. And focusing only on the numbers might end up sounding a little like a math equation. I'm looking at you, McLaren MP4 minus 12C. Also, what if the name ends up being ironically bad, like the Skoda Rapid, which tops out at 109 miles per hour, or the name that tells the world that you have a tiny PP, like the Mini 1D? Then there's all kinds of wacky stuff happening in Japan. Check out this Mazda Proceed Marvy Wild Breeze. Hey guys, I'm Stipe with a giant list of the weirdest, craziest, and all around funniest car names ever. Ready? Let's kick it off with cars that couldn't be bothered with having a name at all, like this Volkswagen Thing. That's what it's called. Thing, like a, a thing, an object. Its original name in Germany is Type 181. In Mexico, it's called Safari Trekker in the UK. But when this thing came to the US, they just called it The Thing. Renault was equally hardworking when they too brought the Renault 5 to America. They called it, drum roll please, Le Car. And this leads us to La Ferrari, not Ferrari La Ferrari, just La Ferrari. It only has one name, like Bono or Cher, and now this. And it basically means the Ferrari, as in, this is the Ferrari. It's just stupid, and the pretentious single name idea didn't work either, since everyone still calls it the Ferrari La Ferrari, which translates to the Ferrari the Ferrari. Confusing, I know, but not as confusing as the Honda that's. What? That's what? But when it comes to weird Japanese names, this is only the tip of the iceberg. Let's talk about that. Let's start with a mumbo jumbo that is the Isuzu Mysterious Utility Wizard. So it's a utilitarian vehicle that's also a mysterious wizard? What? Around the world, this SUV is called the Isuzu Ascender, Frontier, Cameo, Vega, Opel Frontera, Chevy Rodeo, but in Japan, a mysterious utility wizard, because Japan. There's more. The Honda Vamos Hobio Travel Dog. Like, let's go Hobio, and Hobio is the travel dog's name. Or let's go Hobbies, Traveling, Dog. The Toyota Estima Lucida G Luxury Joyful Canopy. What happened here? Everyone in the marketing department gave a suggestion and then they decided to use them all? Another one, the Mitsubishi Chariot Grandis Super Exceed. It's a chariot that's grand in its size, but it also exceeds, super exceeds, something. Mitsubishi is the king of weird, wacky names, like this one, Mouse. Okay, it looks like a mouse, the logo even has a tail, but then you learn, ah, this is an acronym. Mouse stands for Mini Active Urban Sandal. Sandal. Why couldn't they just leave it at mouse? Why did they have to be all smart with it and turn it into an acronym? Mini, because it's small. A, active, yes, okay. Urban, good, S, S. Sandal? Why not mini active urban scout? I can only presume because scandal comes before scout in the dictionary, and that's what they were trying to use when coming up with a name. Do you want more Mitsubishi madness? Here's the Mum 500. Shall we join us? We join us? Aren't we a part of us already? Mitsubishi Tapo BJ, where the BJ stands for Big Joy, you perv. Still Mitsubishi, don't call your car a BJ. In Daihatsu, don't call yours the D-Bag. I would understand if BMW names their cars like that, but no other manufacturer ever should. Moving on, the Suzuki Alto Afternoon Tea, or maybe you prefer the Cappuccino. Nissan Big Thumb and its rivals from Mitsubishi, the Fuso Super Great and Fuso Canter Guts. Guts. Then there's the Suzuki Every Joy Pop Turbo, the Nissan Days Brooks Highway Star X, Mazda Baby Boomers, Geely Urban Nanny, Bruh. Isuzu Light Dump, and the Mazda Titan Dump. Okay, hold on one second. Hey boss, I need to go get that thing. Should I take the light dump or the Titan dump? Take the light dump. 
I'll be taking the Titan dump after lunch. I mean, come on, that joke just practically wrote itself. They named these Light and Titan Dump? Seriously, they should do better research on such names. Just like Honda should have done before they named the turbocharged Honda Life. The Life Dunk. Yeah, never nuke a country twice. And now we come to the category of names that I like to call English Tattoos. You know how Westerners tattoo some Japanese glyphs without even knowing what it means? There's a guy with the word dishwasher written on his arm, and he thinks that's cool. Well, in the same way, I'm guessing the Japanese thought that these were some cool-sounding English words, so they put them on their cars. Suzuki Celerio, or the Mitsubishi Lettuce. Nissan Fair Lady Z, and the Nissan Cedric. Ah, yes, I do declare. Daihatsu Naked which makes sense since they put the body panels on inside out, but still, don't call a car naked. And whoever came up with the Mitsubishi Pistachio, that person was nuts. And finally, the Nissan Hardbody, which ironically crumbled like a piece of paper at the end cap crash test. Yeah, let's talk ironic names. Starting with all those car names that make you feel like you're doing well in life. Names that should be worn by the rivals of Mercedes S-Class, but are instead put on miserable economy boxes. Kia Pride is just mocking you. Chevrolet will turn you into a celebrity from Wish. Suzuki Esteem will take the last piece of the self-esteem that you have. There has never been more than 50 bucks in an esteem in the history of esteems. Mitsubishi Charisma has none of it. Osmobile Achieva is the achievement you don't want to unlock in your life. Daihatsu Applause is you trying to start applause, but no one joins in and you're left just embarrassed. Ford Aspire has nothing to aspire to, and the shitty, ugly, and unreliable Austin Princess will make you feel more like a poor peasant. Also, Nissan had the balls to call this boring-looking, dreary car the Sunny. Why do I feel depressed every time when I see it? Props to the Tahatsu Charade. I guess they don't know what charade means. And now the cars that think too much of themselves, like the already mentioned Skoda Rapid, which does 0 to 60 in over 10 seconds and has a top speed of 109 miles per hour. Last time I checked, that's not very rapid. Still, it's much faster than the Daewoo Racer or the Daewoo Le Mans. Check this out. The real racer. And now the Daewoo Racer. The real Le Mans. And now the Daewoo Le Mans. Suzuki named this 28 horsepower microcar the Mighty Boy. That's mighty as <laughs> if you're an infant. Di Tommaso Mangusta is also a bit of a lie, too. Mangusta is Italian for mongoose, that little ferret that eats snakes, and it was a smirky shot at the Shelby Cobra. But did Mangusta kill the Cobra? No, it didn't. You can shoot and miss if you give the car a person's name, too. Like the Opal Adam, named after the founder of the company, the guy called Adam Opal. The problem is, they made it girly. It's an urban, chic, fashionable little car. Don't believe me? Look at all the promo photos. They're all with girls. And that's a problem for every guy called Adam. He'll be hanging out with his friends, and the Adam car will drive by. Instantly, his friends will be like, Hey, Adam, there goes your car. You're a girl. <laughs> a bit of a confusing name is also the Prince Gloria. Why not Princess Gloria? Well, before it was merged with Nissan, there was a car company that was called Prince, and they made the model Gloria. So Prince Gloria makes sense, kind of. Not really. And finally, the Honda LeGrate. Sure, it can be a fine minivan, but you can't give yourself such a name. Still, Honda LeGrate is a better name than Mazda La Puta. Look, I don't speak Spanish, but I've heard this word in many movies and TV shows, and I would know better than the name of car, the whore. And that's not the only car whose name makes people in some countries giggle. Take the Ford Pinto, for example. Pinto, a type of pony, means penis in Portuguese. A small one, too. Now that you know that, remember the infamous Ford Pinto radio ad? Pinto leaves you with that warm, warm feeling. Not only is it bad because Pintos were catching fire, but a penis that gives you a warm feeling. That's what she said. <laughs> Ford Kuga isn't very popular in the Balkans, where Kuga means the plague. 
Audi made the Frenchies chuckle with the e-tron because e-tron means turd in French. Excrement jokes were also made about the Toyota MR2 as well because merdeau sounds a lot like merdeau, which is French for shit. Alfa Romeo Tonali sounds great with an Italian accent, but with English, it sounds a bit like a toenail. Toyota Sinus sounds dangerously close to sinus, the area of your nose that's filled with boogers. And that's not a good name for a sports car. The Booger Chamber. More Hispanic words. Everyone thinks that the Rematz de Vera is a great name, except in the Spanish-speaking countries where it means the fridge. Chevy Nova didn't sell well in Mexico because Nova means no-go. Mitsubishi Pajero is a bit embarrassing to drive because every hombre will think that you watch a lot of porn. Pajero means wanker. And the same goes for the Canadian drivers of Buick Lacrosse, because in the French-speaking part of that beautiful country, Lacrosse also means jerk-off. Isuzu, on the other hand, is totally open about this activity since they named the car the Bighorn Placer. Clear as day, that one is. A sir that likes to play with the big horn. And that brings us to another set of names, which are, if you have a dirty mind, kind of funny. What am I talking about? Take another penis-themed Japanese car, the Nissan Homie Super Long. I mean, if you're proud of it, why not announce to the whole world that the homeboy is packing heat? <laughs> yeah, boy. By that logic, you should not drive the Mini One. Hey, man, what car do you have? I have a Mini One. I hope you have a good technique, then. It's worse for people who drive the diesel version because that one is called the Mini One D. I guess I should explain that the base model of the Mini in some markets is called the Mini One. So a Mini One and the Mini Cooper. Girls are also not excused from the embarrassment either. The Growler E-Type may sound mean and fitting for retro muscle jack, but Growler is also slang for very bushy lady parts. Gives a new meaning to, I'm gonna go wax my Growler. That's too much information, girl. Audi Titty looks like one when you squint. And the Ford Escort? Well, saying that you came to a party with an Escort will give your mother a bit of a shock. Don't know what Escort means? It's Laputa that works for an agency. Not done with Ford, they also made the probe, which was something that the aliens would stick up your butt. Apparently, this car was very popular around Area 51. And lastly, the Volugrafo Bimbo, which needs no explanation, I hope. All right, let's finish it off with some of the names that are just bad. Porsche Panamera Turbo 4SE Hybrid Sport Turismo 10 Years Edition. Go ahead, try and say that one in one breath. Or better yet, try to fit it all on one trunk lid. Ford Pampa is something infants fill with their number two. A diaper by the world famous Pampers brand is often called a Pampa because of baby talk. Oh, did my sweet little boy stink up his Pampa? Oh, yes he has. Renault Wind is an okay name for a small convertible until you break it. And since it's a girly car, after she breaks the wind, things will never be the same between the two of you. <coughs> Peugeot was inspired by the Japanese when they named their van a beeper teepee outdoor. And in Nissan, they thought they were clever when they named the special edition of the Micra the Nissan Microwave. Can't make popcorn with it though. To understand the McLaren naming convention, it's you that has to be clever. MP4 minus 12C must be some math equation or something. Marketing people at Kia dipped into the single digit IQ when they named the fourth generation Bongo, the Bongo 3. And they thought they were all hip and cool with the Proceed. Look, we wrote Proceed in a really cool urban way. That's how you kids write things these days, right? How do you do, fellow kids? More problems at Kia in their lineup of luxury K cars. There's the baby K5, the mama K7, and the papa K9. K9, as in the Latin word for dog. Maybe it works better with other numbers. Let's see, K8 is Kate. K10, K10, Keten, Kate, Kate, sounds like kitten. They really did corner themselves with this one. Ford Ka was very popular in Britain, despite making people mad. Oi, mate, I've heard you got a new car. Yes, the Ford Ka. Which model? Ka. Oh, fuck off, mate. And then there's the AMC Gremlin, which fits the design. It's a small, ugly creature that's more like a pest than something to be afraid of. Chevrolet was about to name this car the Condor. Not bad, but then they changed their mind and called it the Citation, which is a small piece of paper a police officer will give you for a minor traffic offense. And I leave you with my favorite one. This rare car from the Gaylord Brothers is named after half-naked muscular men dressed in leather who stab each other to death. Gladiators. 
So it's the Gaylord Gladiator. <laughs> oh yes, it's real. Honestly, this American Rolls Royce rival is a fine car, but drive it and people will only have one thing on their mind. Why are you gay? Also for my peeps from the Balkans, let's call it the Gaylord Gladiator. That just made it 10 times funnier. Ask your Balkan friend why. Anyway, do you know any other funny sounding car names? Comment below, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.